Your name. Mike Gillespie is my name. And why do they call you Skip? <laughs> Skip, an innocuous nickname referencing the manager used widely in the baseball community. But to those who know the Hall of Fame coach, know it's a title personified by Mike Gillespie. Hey, that's uh, is not a name I gave myself, I would tell you that. But uh, if, if we dial this thing back about 30 years ago, uh, one of the guys that coached with us, it was just part of his common vernacular. And then another guy and then somebody else. And so it seems to have gained some momentum over the years. That's how it started. A coaching career that began in the playing days at the University of Southern California wouldn't come to a close for nearly half a century. But it was one of Skip's own legendary coaches that helped shape the style that we have come to know as his own and love today. Everybody that has followed college baseball for any length of time, was very, very familiar with Rod Data, who was the head baseball coach at USC for close to 50 years. And he was our coach. Among the things that stand out in my memory were his emphasis on the mental game, uh, his emphasis on minimizing mental mistakes. A phrase that I've only ever heard him say was, never make the same mistake once. And I always thought that was a great phrase. He was elite in, in many, many ways, but had this wicked sense of humor, had this biting uh, wit, um, and things were always funny. And so the culture, uh, the environment was fun. And I've always felt like that's the way it ought to be. I, I honestly feel like it's more about the senses of humor of the players. I've been blessed with other coaches that have coached with me, including the guys that are with us right now, that are clever, can come up with a one-line masterpiece. And that all is part of it. That's part of the enjoyable experience, though. Rod Dato would go on to lead Skip and fellow Trojans to victory in the 1961 College World Series. But even with the championship under his belt, not even the delusional college ball player could have foreseen the career path that lie ahead. Did you know coaching was always going to be in the cards? Well, uh, no, I didn't. I was one of those delusional baseball players that thought he was better than he was and thought that he would be a professional player and a major league player. And looking back at it, it's easy to realize, yeah, delusional is a good word to describe that. And so I thought, well, I'm probably best suited to be a teacher and a coach. Let's just run through this. 16 seasons at College of the Canyons. Yes. 20 seasons coaching USC, a season in the minors, and 11 seasons here mm -hmm. at UC Irvine. Did you ever envision that it would be 48 years no. of coaching for you? No. There was a time that I was a young and spry 60 years old. Okay. Oh, to be 60 again. <laughs> um, so we were talking about contract, and they asked me, how long would you want to do this? And I chose arbitrarily, I chose seven, because I thought, who in the hell would want to do this past the age of 67? And so uh, I'm trying to illustrate that no, I never, if we dial it all the way back, I couldn't have been able to foresee this. And even at that point, at age 60, I couldn't foresee that I'd still be doing this close to 20 years later. The, the thing I've always enjoyed the most is the competition of the games. I think that's not what we're supposed to say as an answer to that question. We're supposed to say I really enjoy working with kids and the youth of America and teaching, in this case, uh, teaching the game and teaching the skills of the game. And I do like all that. I do. I don't think I've ever had a day where I did not want to go to practice. However, it's the games that, w it's why we do it. Going all the way back to the high school days, has always been fun, it's always been intense, it's always been competitive, that we were matched up against really good coaches, really well-schooled teams with really good players, and so it's always been a grind, it's always been a battle, and I've liked that. So any advice then to any of these young baseball players who might be, in your words, delusional? <laughs> they might not go on to play, but if they're, if they're looking to get into coaching? Well, that's say? a really, that's a very, very, very good question and a very good point because 
I feel kind of like a Judas because we are part and parcel to their dreams of wanting to play professional baseball. We're supposed to be able to foster their progress and development. Knowing full well, however, what the numbers tell us, that almost none, almost none, will, have, will ever get to the major leagues. We may seem like we speak out of both sides of our mouth when we are always preaching, you go about baseball to become the best you can be to play at the highest level that you can play, and hopefully you will get that chance to play professional baseball, but you better go about your school business as though you won't. Despite what the numbers say, Skip has coached his fair share of major leaguers, 36 to be exact, several of whom played for the 1998 College World Series winning team. Marking the second time in his career, Skip was crowned as the nation's best, but also marking just the second time in history for someone to win a College World Series as a player and also as a coach. Skip remains only one of two people to have ever done so. That team was blessed with a lot of really good players and a lot of older players. We had some really highlight, high-end players that had real good major league careers, but we had other really, really good players who were really good college players, some of whom did play professional baseball that did not become major league players, but were nonetheless really, really good players. Are there any of the memorable teams that maybe didn't win? Yes. That really yes. stick out to you in your career? Yes. A couple of them right here at UCI. Um, w with, the, with the guys that are on our staff right now, I'm talking about Ben Orleff and Danny Babona and Bryce Stoll and Eric Dergish. Those guys played on teams that the last six weeks of the season in 2000 and I guess nine it was, was the number one ranked team in the country for six weeks. So that was clearly a team that was capable and of, of winning the whole thing. So you're sort of stuck with the realization that it coulda, mighta, woulda, coulda, maybe, shoulda been, and didn't. But those are now the guys who are going to be taking over for you yes. when you're gone on yes. coaching mm -hmm. staff here. Yeah, they can worry about it now. What do you think that says about you, though, in terms of your leadership? Oh, I don't think it says anything about me. I mean, Ben Orloff is, of course, the person we're talking about that has been announced as the next head baseball coach, and I am all in on that. His skills, his abilities, his instinct for the game uh, was part of him long before he and I ever met. Obviously, what I want for them is that they will win. It's hard. It, it really is hard. This is a great university and there's a lot to love about this university and specifically about what has gone on here in baseball, what this field is, uh, what this conference is, what the schedule is. This is no piece of cake place academically. It's not for everybody. What, what I know is an absolute, it's a matter of fact, that Ben Orloff is a worker and whoever will be on his staff will be a worker and that is what it takes through the players turned coaches and the coaches turned successors, the major leaguers who panned out and the dozens more who didn't. The accomplishments that Skip remains most proud of are the ones that extend far beyond the ballpark. Now with the perspective of hindsight and with all these years and all these players, uh, you, you, you can't help but realize that so many have done so well in their professions, uh, in their personal lives with their families. I, I feel every bit as proud, as certainly, and certainly as, uh, as admiring of those guys that have gone on to whatever it's been and had real successful lives. I, I, th I think that's probably the thing that I feel best about. What I hope is is that the players that played in all these different places I've been would say that they had uh, a great experience. They enjoyed it. I'm, I am comfortable with saying that I think that most of the players will have said or will say that they had, a, they had an enjoyable experience, which again, to repeat, I think is primarily about the other guys they play with. You know, I've been out there lurking while these practices and games are going on I hope that they would say that they, you know, that they enjoyed being in our programs. A man who has known little life without baseball will say farewell to coaching later this month. Our hats go off to you 
your Hall of Fame career, and your decades of contributions to UC Irvine and all of collegiate baseball. Thank you, Mike Gillespie.